Okay, we'll just break out of that there because Scott Morrison just begun that mini-conference camera. Setting small business up to succeed, setting young people up to succeed, uh, setting Australians as they age up to succeed. This, this is the goal of the government as we go forward and it's pleasing to see uh, that uh, I think that message is getting out there and that people can see that under the alternative, uh, under Labor, under Bill Shorten, then the security, be it their economic security or otherwise, uh, is something that uh, Australians would trust a coalition government with and that's certainly the trust we're seeking to earn as we go about the business of good government every single day. Are you going to dump your policy on the dole this week? Uh, not everything remains on the table until something else is put on the table. I made that pretty clear at the press club last week. So Do you expect discussions this week? Andrew Broad and Dan Tan suggested there would be discussions about the six-month wait this week. Yeah, I'm, I continue to be in discussions on all of these measures, right across the things that are in before the Senate. I had a, a very useful discussion uh, with Senator Muir uh, last week, and I look forward to having further discussions with him and his crossbench colleagues. Because at the end of the day, what it's about is actually finding the right answers and the right solutions to the problems that we're facing. And that is to get young people into work and not have them dependent on welfare for, for a lifetime. The, the, the challenge is to help families get back into work and stay in work once they've had kids. The challenge is to encourage Australians as they age to stay in work as long as they can, should they be able to, should they be healthy and able to continue to work and they enjoy that. Well, let's encourage them to do that and to, and to unlock the capital that they have uh, which can really support our economy. I mean, they've been the super consumers of a generation and let's encourage them to keep doing that. Minister, when you say other things need to be put on the table, are you putting other things yourself on the table, offering alternatives, or are you waiting for crossbenchers, Labor, to come to you and give their alternatives to you? All, all of the above, Tom. Uh, I mean, I'm looking to find a way forward. Uh, in all of these areas. I'm interested in solving these problems, um, which are the ones that I outlined last week, which I've outlined consistently since coming into this role. I'm interested to know um, how the crossbench feels we can address some of these challenges, and I'm very open to their ideas, as, as I always have been and the government always has been. So it, it really is an invitation. Uh, what, what, what we get from the opposition, though, in these things is just a blanket no and no alternative. And, uh, and I mean, we've got the Leader of the Opposition running around with his Google tax, something they couldn't do in government and now he thinks is the answer to every single fiscal problem the government has. I mean, Bill Shorten has been caught short when it comes to his policy ideas. I mean, I haven't seen one. The light bulb has still not gone off over his head in his great year of the idea. So just to clarify, if there was a better proposal than the six-month waiting period, you'd be prepared to dump that in favour of something better if that's what the crossbench is? Well, uh, well I've been pretty clear. If someone wants to put something on the table, which is a good idea, well, we can look at what's on the table and take it off. But it has to be something better. It has to be something that takes us forward. As a government, we're interested and focused on helping people to succeed. Does that poll today stop the leadership speculation? Should it stop the leadership speculation? Well, I don't know why the media fell for that nonsense last week at all. I have no idea why they did. There was nothing going on. And uh, as I said, maybe a few political bedwetters carrying on, but you know that that's for them. And uh, frankly, I thought it was a, a storm in a teacup. And and uh, you know, you guys may have got sold the dump on that. Patrick McClure has endorsed the principle of a bipartisan committee to look mm. at his recommendations and work through and build a consensus. Is that something you would support? Well, I'm very interested in in working with everyone in the parliament, whether it be the opposition or or other parties, about how we can take this important agenda forward. And I think Patrick has made some very good. Um, uh, suggestions on that front and we're, we're open to all of those possibilities. But this would be a, a process with, in which you're not involved. It would be about uh, yeah. having people from both sides of politics come together and work out a consensus well, in the absence of I am of on you. one side of politics so that would mean I probably would be involved. But, but you probably would be <laughs> on the Senate committee. No, that, I probably wouldn't but my point is I'm open to all of those sorts of suggestions and I'm, I'm happy to work those things through because I think Patrick McClure has set out a very good goal, a very worthy goal for us to move towards. It's not an easy thing to do. I think you've got to get there incrementally. I think you've got to take everybody with you. And uh, that is something that the government would certainly be interested in doing. But to do it, you've got to understand that the, the cost-benefit analysis, the winners and losers analysis, cannot just be done on the next five minutes. You have to think about the winners and losers in the next generation as well. And I would encourage everybody who is analysing these issues to take a broader perspective on the winners and losers argument. If we want to make the system better, if we want to make the system uh, be there for the future, 
then you have to look at what the implications are, not only for our generation, but for the next generation when it comes to this debate. You've got to move forward incrementally and you've got to know where you're going. And this government does know where it's going. And I think Patrick McClure has set that out in a, in a very worthy yeah, way. Last one. Last night. Was leadership raised at all? Uh, no, we, we're focused on the preparations for the budget. We're focused on uh, good government. We're focused on setting Australians up for success. And that's where our focus is. And that's where I think we're making the gains. And I think in, in doing that, we are exposing Bill Shorten as an absolute policy lightweight. Unfunded empathy, running around the country, empathising with every problem and no solutions, certainly no funding for it. And I think the Australian people are waking up to Bill Shorten. And so they should. He's a policy lightweight. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Tough. <clears throat> OK, so that was live from Parliament House in Canberra. The Social Services Minister, Scott Morrison, questioned on the government's position on the six-month waiting period for the dole. The minister 